Hi, welcome to Studio 14. I'm Ginny Sawyer with the City of Fort Collins, and today our show is really the Ranger Rollout. You may have seen some of this. I'm going to let our two Rangers introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about how long they've been in the Ranger program and a little about what they did prior. So, Bud? Well, I'm Bud Brady Hoft. I was an officer, police officer with the City of Fort Collins for 25 years. Me and Mike started together years ago. Um, I came over to the Parks Division to get a park ranger program started and initiated and on the ground. Um, and it's fashioned after the natural area ranger program. Um, took me a little while and um, got started about in August last year. And, and now we have my new partner, Mike. Mike, tell us a little. Yeah, um, my name is Mike West. And I also work for the city of Fort Collins Police Department for 25 years, served as a sergeant there for the last 21. And this opportunity to uh, kind of make a career change came up and knowing Bud for all these years and just his philosophy on life and treating people and being a part of a new program, uh, it just seemed like a great fit to transition from police work to this. Perfect. So. People may not be super aware about our ranger program. So we have natural area rangers. Now we have park rangers. You guys are not armed? Nope. You're armed. Not, not armed. armed. Nope. Okay. That's always helpful, I think, to know. Um, and so what, what's the real emphasis of the ranger program? Well, you know, the parks division takes in recreation areas and facility in facilities in, in our recreation areas. That, that would in, include the, the cemeteries, Northside Oslon, the golf courses, um, gardens on Spring Creek, our archery range, uh, horseshoe pits, golf frisbee. Plus, we have um, almost, well, we have 46 developed parked. We have some develop that are being developed. Um, so that's nearly 1,000 acres of parks. We have almost, a th what, 3 million visitors a year. Um, we try, we try to work just the two of us in, in a way that I learned um, in the police department, um, community policing mm -hmm. and problem-oriented policing. Um, that's where we try to get um, uh, people to get along in the parks and with our parks and protect our resources and take responsibility for that. So were we seeing a real... Um uptick in problems in these areas, facilities, and parks, or is this being kind of more proactive as we know we're seeing more and more visits in the park, and how can we just start having a presence? Well, one of the thir first missions that, that I was uh, directed to get a handle on was that um, trying to, to get pets and pet owners to be responsible okay. in the parks. Um, um, there, there was a big influx in dog ownership in the parks, and and um, we not love that our dogs. we love our dogs. And yeah. it, um, the the thing is, is that we want everyone in the parks to enjoy the parks. And and sometimes you have those conflicts when you have uh, dogs that are off leash. Or um, the other thing is trying to get people to pick out after their their animals. Um, Having worked in neighborhood services, a lot of our complaints were actually people not picking up after their pets. And you know, and the parks division does a, a works hard at, at trying to at trying to emphasize that we have dog stations all all over the parks at every entrance to a park. In order to facilitate that, almost um, seven hundred thousand disposable uh, biodegradable bags are right there at a trash can at the most convenient spots to get that to get that done but again you know that's just one thing that we were directed to impact we have a lot of conflicts with uh, loitering whether it's homeless mm -hmm. homeless encampments whether it's unsupervised youth um, alcohol violations we have over a hundred thousand dollars done in damage to our parks not including the graffiti that goes on um, with, that we're all just in people impact. breaking and messing things up. That's a lot. It is, um, um, and and so we'll try to do strategies in order to impact that. Try to lessen that. Um, a big part of that is having a visible presence. So um, one of the things that I had to do right off was get get 
a uniform that was unique to the Parks Division. Um, we had to get our, our trucks equipped. Um, we partner with Animal Control, uh, mm -hmm. the natural area rangers. You know, there's a lot of natural areas in, inside the city, city limits, limits, which yeah. is our jurisdiction, but um, the natural area folks help us and facilitate um, seeing problems by riding our trails. They, they enforce on our trails. They also have enforced in our parks as a favor to us. Oh, okay. um, and the police department. We're, we're tied into the police department. Me and Mike coming from um, police services, we got a good relationship, good, good, strong relationship with those folks. Um, not that they were, we want to be sworn officers anymore. It's kind of a retirement <laughs> job for us. Um, but it's eyes and ears. The more eyes and ears you have out there. Um, also the crews. We have over 100 people um, that are in our parks right now that work for the city that they're calling Good us night. now. They're getting used to having somebody that can impact oh. what they might consider. That's not a real police problem, but I'm going to let Bud or Mike know about it. So right. maybe we can do something. So, Mike, I'm curious. I'm sure, obviously, um, not armed, but it is a bit of an enforcement position. You know, what, what do you bring from the police department to this job? You know, having been in law enforcement like we have for so many years, um, we've become well trained in assessing problems, um, in dealing with conflict, in, in dealing with uh, people who are really emotional and upset um, about maybe there's been some confusion in scheduling a field, to um, maybe two people getting angry with each other because of a dog um, mm -hmm. harassing their dog or them. So conflict resolution is something that we're, we're really comfortable with. We also are pretty comfortable with dealing with people who are, aren't your typical citizen that you would see in the park. Because of our um, homeless population or our transit population, we've over the years developed skills to be comfortable with them, um, keep ourselves safe, help keep them safe. Um, you know, one of the things that has come up is we have 32 plus miles of trails just in Fort Collins. A lot. Over the last year, we had 1.9 .9 million visitors to those trails. So there's just a lot of people out there in a pretty confined uh, trail system in a way. Yep. So making sure that People don't speed too fast on bicycles and get themselves or somebody else hurt. Right. Um, asking them to slow down without creating a big scene <laughs> out of it. Both of us are pretty comfortable keeping things at a really mellow win-win um, situation. We're out here to be ambassadors, um, stewards of our parks, and, and treat our citizens with the respect they deserve. And, right. Um, That's good. Well, having worked with you, I, I can speak that uh, you can... You are mellow. You start at that lowest possible level, and it's a nice interaction to come upon. Um, you know, I, I agree. I think whether it's a scheduling conflict, whether it's a, a pet owner or a pet issue in the park, it's easy to, to minimize that, especially coming from a law enforcement background, right? Like, go get a lot of bad guys. But really, the, these are kind of big issues and we hear a lot about it in the city and a lot of complaints. So how do you how do you go about prioritizing that and sort of what do I say bring the importance to it? Well, it, you know, it's 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 important if it's involving you. Right. You know, that's when it becomes important. Uh-huh. Um and as an officer, um I tended to the about the times that I got into the parks were at night when I was working night shift um, because of the hours right. um, and, and eating lunch in the daytime and, and not really paying attention to what's going on unless I was called into the park. Mm -hmm. um, now that I've been in the parks and I've been on pretty much every kind of trail or access point now, I mean, I'm sure there's still some that I haven't hit. I had no idea this system was as big as it was. Yeah. Um, the folks I run into, there is a lot of important issues just on any trail. And most of the folks that are on a trail are near their home or if it's a neighborhood park, mm -hmm. um, they take ownership in that. And when they see something going on, it, it's really important. And it's like their backyard. And, you know, and, I, and I've told people that is that if you have family or friends visiting, you want to show off our back park 
to Fort, you know, of Fort Collins. And people are really, just like when I was working District 1, um, Which that, is a downtown yeah, the area. Down, yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, let's go downtown and see. Well, if you think of all, like our splash parks, um, all, all those places, that becomes ours. And, it's, and anytime you have that like, uh, sense of community, um, anything that gets out of whack becomes really important. Um, conflict can escalate into a huge deal. And, and if, you're just ha if you're just like the referee in a basketball game, and you try to get people to cooperate according to the rules, you generally get compliance. Most people, 99% of them, want to get along. Mm -hmm. and, and so you just got to find that, that argument that, that settles it. Maybe you come out with a different way. Like I, I know that, that um, uh, like shelter conflicts, when somebody wants in a shelter that somebody else is occupying and they don't want to give it up, um, how do you reach that compromise? Okay. Not everybody can be in the in this shelter, okay? So somebody's <laughs> got to give here. Who's going to give? Yeah. And maybe the next time you can have that. Or um, if somebody's acting out, you don't know if that person's maybe having a bad day. Um, and you get to the root cause of what their, their issue is, and you identify that, and then you can talk it out with them, take some time with it. Where otherwise, um, there's nobody t to do that. And, and we can take, we're afforded a lot of discretion and a lot of time to deal with some some kind of issue or problem, and um, never have we been pressured to to do the enforcement side. We are we are specially commissioned officers uh, in that we can enforce municipal code. It's it's not at the forefront of our minds. Um, always we we are trying to facilitate and, and work it out. But you could write a ticket if it came to and that. It, it, yeah. Okay. And, and yeah. And then ultimately, I can have an officer respond oh, sure. as well. I, they're, that's why they're right, they're, there. they're right there. I'm hooked in. The dispatcher knows where I'm at. I'm checked out. Um, I feel pretty safe out there knowing that I could have help there at any time, which like yeah. I said, you don't know what kind of a day somebody's having. So Right. So have you found, do people just approach you when you're out on your patrols at all? You know, uh, the, the full gamut of uh, receptiveness, I guess. I, I've had some citizens be elated that we're out there. You know, they're excited about this program. They love the parks. Some of them have used parks like City Park for 25 years. Right. And can tell us stories about when they first started going there and horses being ridden around the park. And wow. um, th those kind of folks are really excited to see us out there. Um, in, our, in the approach that we have, which is primarily education. Mm -hmm. um, the people that uh, are doing things they shouldn't be doing, just in the last couple of weeks, that behavior has changed because when they see a ranger truck roll in, they're grabbing their dog, putting them on a leash, and trying to sneak out, you know, um, where as in the past, they just didn't care. Right. Um, but I think the majority of people are really excited about the program excited about the communication that's going to increase between them and us and, and maybe issues that come up. Right. Um, so if someone, if I'm in the park and I, and I see something that, that's not, a, it's not a 911 call, right? And it's not, it, can you just call the park's line or how do these things usually get reported to you? Well, we, the, the Parks Division is, is, you can leave a message after hours, but it's 221-6660. Okay. That's if it's an, it, anything that you think a park ranger can um, influence. We both have business cards that have our cell numbers on them, and oh, okay. we pass those out like candy. Oh, okay. And so, and I do. I have, I have people, like I said, they take ownership in their park, mm -hmm. which is generally near wherever they're, tra you know, next <laughs> to their home or... Uh, like Spring Creek Trail, I have folks that have volunteered, they, you know, without even me asking to pick it up or, you know, what can I do to help, those kinds of things. And, and so they always have my line. And, and the more people I, I know I, that I can impact that with, because what, what that does is it, it sets a culture. And, and what we want to do is, is, is make the culture so that everyone is having a great time. And, and if, if I sense it, what my, what, what, if I, what I'm doing, somebody's not having a good time, um, I'm going to care about that as a person utilizing the parks. Now, we don't have like um, a hot number other than if there's a crime in progress, you're still going to call 911. Yep. Now, being attached to, to the police department and police dispatch, we can hear that. Now, police has, uh, okay. yeah, police have not started dispatching us, but 
because of work computers are just like we had when we were on the police department, I can see if a call is pending. Um, and if I feel I have the capability and the equipment to handle the, the, the call, I'll, what, I'll do what we call jump the call. Let me have that call. Um, Graffiti in progress, vandalism in progress. Yeah, but there. generally on something like that, that's a 911 call. Anytime oh, okay. there's just, it's real easy. And, and I don't know, a lot of folks, when I've, I've done a lot of crime prevention talks, and mm -hmm. um, it, it's always a question, when should I call 911? Yeah. Well, the easy answer is anytime. You ask yourself that yeah, question. You, yeah, <laughs> should I call? Um, and then if it's something that, you know, common sense things that are, are non-emergency, but you need the police to know about it, um, it's the non-emergency number. Animal control, uh, their number is posted at our dog parks. Again, we work with animal control. Mm -hmm. um, and so they still answer the calls during business hours and certain calls like aggressive animals and things like that after hours, but then the police department will, okay. will respond. So um, we, get, we get communication in many different ways. Um, we just uh, had our website done and one of the things is we haven't, I don't think we've put our number on there yet, but we've got to get it on there so it, it goes into the parks yeah. office. Oh, okay. Well, that, yeah, that's good to know how to, yeah. how to reach you when you're out there. Um, so I've heard through the, the grapevine that a lot of departments are really glad you're out there. I'm going to go back a little bit to the cleaning up after your dog because, again, one of these where to some people, not a big deal. Why do we even do that? Oh, my gosh. To others, you know, 911, they're not picking up. So we've got this range of emotions on this issue. Um, you know, where, where does it all meet common ground? Well, the, um, what you, you're going to see us talking a lot of, uh, in, in, in the near future about the dog feces because that is, right now, it's, it's polluting our stormwater, oh, our river. Okay. Um, they did a study a couple years ago, and I wasn't a part of that study, but uh, they had estimated that there was 100, oh, 292, 192 tons of dog feces, um, which was about 50% about of what they felt was being left behind. Wow. That was soaking into our soils and um, uh, going down into our stormwaters and down to the river. The other side of that, you know, because I've, I've had both. Uh, horse droppings and dog droppings yeah. and, and what the difference is. I've, I've had to go to like school on this stuff. To learn. I have no idea. Well, tell us. I know. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, uh, the one, you can look at the two differently and one is organic and that hor uh, horse droppings um, don't carry the kinds of diseases and bugs that, that dog feces does. Okay. So what you can do, you can actually just let it dry out and, and fertilize the lawn. No damaging. No damage. Nothing. Okay. Um, but uh, however, the dog feces doesn't, doesn't uh, um, erode or, or become organic. It just stays nasty. And, you know, our kids get into it. You step into it. It's, it's, it's not pretty to look at. Um, and, um, and I'm hearing it pollutes our water system. Absolutely. And, and the kinds of, and, and, and um, I don't know if anybody is aware of this or not, but we are one of, the only communities in the United States that is Audubon certified. All right, all a lot parks. of our parks. All, all of them. All of them. Oh, okay. And we're the only community in the United States that get that certification. And you know, you tend to lose that accredited, you know, that that kind of certification okay. and that kind of beauty, if if you have that. You know, um, dog feces can pollute to the point that it, it's it's similar to to like uh, uh, petroleum products that wow. you can't plant, you can't eat things grown in the soil from that. And I don't think I had, you know, I really didn't know until right. I got, <laughs> wow, there's some, there's a really big reason why we want to, and, and especially when we afford all the ways that you can keep it clean. Right, and, all the bags, all the trash cans. And we are more than happy to empty those trash cans, you know, right. and, and, and work hard at doing that. The other side is, it's just the cleanliness, you know, um, when you talk about loitering and things, um, it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, once that big crowd moves on, um, there's all that trash that's laying there. Yeah. And Have you noticed? <laughs> well, that happens with a lot of different age groups in different parts. It does. Mm -hmm. I don't want to target anyone here on this show. Well, but, uh, you know, and I can say that is that one of my, and I work closely with the school resource officers because mm -hmm. um, our, our, our parks that are near high schools tend to get the brunt of that because people yeah. are leaving campus. 
to socialize and be together, which is fine. We, you know, that's right. what the parks are for. It's a place to go, commune. Um, Hang out with your friends. Yeah. Um, we just ask that you pick it up. And, and what I've been trying to do, I'll, I'll even get out of my patrol vehicle and I will start cleaning up. And pretty soon other kids are helping me clean up. Oh, and, nice. You know, and help me keep it clean because that's all I'm asking is, you know, please, for the other people that use this park, please keep it clean, um, keep your voices down, that kind of thing. Um, and everybody's happy. That's really the mission. I mean, these folks over in parks work really hard. I had no idea. Um, our park system, we it, take it for granted, <laughs> but it a lot goes into it. And our trails are always, I mean, they're out at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning cleaning our trails from the snow, debris, uh, repairing the damages from the floods and, and trying to make it really nice. I, you know, I've, last spring when I was in there, um, we had the snowstorms last spring. Yep. And, and I mean, everyone was bummed because we couldn't keep the, you know, the ballparks. We want them in there. We, that's the difference between a recreation area and a natural area is that we want people being on the grass, you know. We yeah. want them in there. We <laughs> want them tearing it up, you know, and having fun. Taking and, fun with it. Yeah. Well, this is a really exciting program, and I'm happy that you both are on board to kind of pilot it and get it going. You bring a lot of good experience, which is super. Um, I would encourage folks that are out there, if you see either of these guys when you're out enjoying our parks, approach them, say hi, mm -hmm. get a copy of their cards with their cell phone numbers on there. Um, and I guess really my takeaway is that overriding message that all these parks are ours and we all need to, to clean them up. Mm -hmm. whether that be uh, litter or cleaning up after your dog. <laughs> Just do it, Just right? Do it. All right. Thank you guys so much. Really Thanks appreciate all your work and what you do. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.